Hi, I'm James Heimbach, product manager <clears throat> for the testing group at GitLab. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick speed run or to show off how you set up code coverage uh, within a project so you can see it as a batch and then how you'll see the difference in code coverage uh, in a merge request. So what you're looking at here is just a copy of the project that I've been using on most of these speed runs, a uh, quick little Java project uh, just to show some things off. So let's go ahead and start in our web IDE. So the first thing we're going to do is modify the Palm XML um, just to add a plugin to help us out with this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste that. We'll add another plugin down here. I'm not too worried about the formatting there. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and modify our GitLab CI YAML um, to actually add to the file uh, that is going to store the coverage or the coverage report. That way we can go ahead and look at it in a job later. And I'm going to expose that as an artifact there. Okay. So that should be all we need to do to go ahead and get that code coverage value uh, starting to be calculated on our master branch. So we'll go ahead and commit that. All right, and while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes to my project so that we can now leverage that new data for the badge. All right, so while that's running, let's go ahead and go into our CICD settings first. And here we can get a coverage report. We're using Java, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this value right into here. Save my changes. All right. The other change I'm going to make at the project level is back in the general settings. In badges. Go ahead and create a coverage badge. And what I'm gonna use is just the project path variable and then my default branch. You could always set this to a different branch if you wanted, but I wanna see my coverage on master. And send the link here. So there's a way that you could publish that index.html that we're creating from the plugin uh, as part of our script, and you can link to that. I'll link to it below the video in the notes, uh, another post that someone has put together showing how to publish that report into GitLab pages so that you can link to it. Uh, that's a, a great little tutorial of how to set that up. And add our badge. All right, we have a badge there. So right now our coverage is unknown. Uh, if our coverage was already calculated and there was an artifact to parse from, it would display it here. Uh, but since we haven't merged this in yet, it doesn't have anything to look at. So let's go back to our merge request and see how it's doing. All right, looks like we're good. We have a coverage value already in our pipeline. So now this is going to start to display in all of our merge requests where we're calculating coverage. So we'll go ahead and merge this in. And once that's done running, we'll see a badge value back on our page. So go ahead and pause the video while this is finishing up running the merge request, and then we'll be back to see what our coverage value is for the project. All right, our pipeline is green, and we can see now that we have a coverage value of 50%. So that's exciting, we have a coverage badge now. So I didn't record this demo or this walkthrough to show how to do that. There are, after all, blog posts already on GitLab about how to do that. Uh, I did this as a setup because I'm often asked and I've seen a lot of issues requesting the ability to fail a merge request um, if that code coverage value that's calculated is going to decrease. Uh, with the change. And we haven't built that feature into GitLab yet. It's something that we're considering um, and how we can really do a value add for it. In the meantime, though, it's actually pretty simple to set up uh, with just some bash scripting and some changes into the GitLab CI YAML. 
Um, so by no means take this as the definitive way on how to do this. Um, this was my first attempt at a bash script and incorporating it into my GitLab CI YAML. Uh, so it's not efficient, it's not very elegant. Hopefully you can build on this and do much, much better. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through that process and make a little bash that's gonna fail a job, uh, fail a pipeline if the code coverage is gonna decrease with our change. So first thing I'm gonna do is add a new file. And I'm just going to call it code coverage. So I've already written the script for this, um, and I'll walk through it real quick. But let's take a look. Um, so all this does is it uses some of the uh, variables that are available to us um, as being part of GitLab. Uh, so we are gonna just grab our project ID and our latest pipeline and grab the coverage value out of the um, JSON response that comes there. Store that into a value. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of echoing here just as I was debugging this to make sure I got all the right stuff. You could obviously clean that up yourself. Uh, and then do the same thing for master. Uh, because I want to compare it to the master branch, that's what I'm using as my default branch in this project. And so at the end of the day, what I'm doing is just comparing those two values. As long as the latest is greater or equal to the master value, it's going to go ahead and be happy and give me a green pipeline or at least a green job. Otherwise, it's just going to fail. And so I'm going to go ahead and just commit this real quick. And oh, sorry, before I commit, I have to change my GitLab CI YAML. Let's go ahead and get in there. We need to add another stage here for test. And we're gonna add our coverage check job here. Um, so this is where we get inefficient with it. The only way I could figure out how to do this, and I did not spend too long on it, was by grabbing the Alpine latest image and then adding to it to ensure that I had bash, could get the jQuery and curl. Uh, to make sure that I could then run my shell script. There's probably a lot more efficient ways or other images that include all of these things, so you don't have to grab them every time, uh, but this was definitely the fastest way to get this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit this, and once we have a green pipeline again with this change in, uh, we'll show adding a new function and getting that value to decrease so we can see a red pipeline. All right, we have a green pipeline. Coverage check is all good to go. We can see here because we didn't make any changes that our coverage uh, on master is 50% and on the pipeline is 15% or on the branch rather is 50% so our job passed. I'm going to go ahead and merge my change and when we get back we'll uh, go ahead and make a change into the Java so that we can see this fail. Okay, we're back after a merge and I'm already into my Java app and I'm just adding this little add function right here uh, to show what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do when we add some code but don't have to test for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit this and we'll just let this run in real time uh, so you can see how quick the secondary job runs here. Most of the weight on this is on the Maven build.
All right, we can see our test job finished up and you can see the content of the HTML here. Let's browse to that real quick just to show you what is in that. And this is just specific to the plugin that we're using and the artifact that it creates. But this is the content that we follow that other demo we can see published over to GitLab pages. All right, so let's go back into coverage check. All right, so it's still showing 50% uh, pass for our coverage, and that's on master. We can see here that we have a decrease in coverage in our merge request. So it's down by 19% because we have such a small code base, you're gonna see big jumps like that. Uh, and let's actually go into the job itself. We can see the same comparison happened there where we have 31% coverage on our pipeline uh, from that job. And that compares to 50% for our master. And so we failed. And so that's just an example of what you can do with a little bit of shell scripting or a little bit of bash scripting and the GitLab CI YAML file. I hope that you find some better ways, uh, more efficient, more elegant ways to make that happen. Uh, I'll link uh, this project and the uh, blog post that I mentioned about getting coverage published over into GitLab pages uh, in the video notes below. Uh, hope you enjoyed this quick demo. Thanks. Bye.